So I'm Mira, um, here to talk about A Garden in Every Lot, which is operated by AmeriCorps members out of the University of Northern Iowa Center for Energy and Environmental Education. So to start, um, we aim to revive a culture of backyard gardening in the region. And we do that by providing free services to help people and community organizations overcome any barriers they might have to starting a garden. Um, and our first year of our program was last year and we planted 35 backyard gardens, including um, one garden at Orchard Hill Elementary School that was larger. And we're now heading into the second year of our program. So some of the reasons that we do this are that gardening has a lot of benefits. One of the obvious ones is that it increases access to fresh vegetables. And this is especially important for reducing the burden on food insecure communities. It also increases physical activity and it improves mental health simply from getting to be outside and working on the garden. And it's also great to know where your food came from. So to expand upon some of these benefits, um, gardening lets you control the way that your food is grown. And you can do that by limiting the amount of fertilizers and pesticides that you use. And you also have the luxury of getting to pick your vegetables when they're fully ripe, unlike store-bought vegetables that are picked ahead of time. And gardening's also been found to decrease the amount of stress that people perceive they have. And it also gives people an enjoyable hobby that gives them time for things like creativity and self-reflection. And it's also been found to improve self-esteem, motor skills, flexibility, and it reduces pain. And not surprisingly, gardening increased during the pandemic. And there was some anecdotal evidence that it had a really positive effect because it fulfilled people's desire to obtain food and it also fulfilled their desire to fill their free time um, while also reducing anxiety and stress. So I'll hand it over to Alyssa. Great, thank you, Mira. Um, so here we just have some pictures of some gardeners from last year. Uh, like Mira said, we had about 35 gardeners, and so we had people from all different backgrounds, um, people wanting to grow just for enjoyment or for their families. Some were older people, and there were younger people too, some people, you know, living alone, and some with their family and their kids, and it was an activity that they could do together. Um, so we have some testimonials that we got. One was from Danita Gadsden. Um, she said that the help from our team was phenomenal and inspired her daughter to grow her own garden. Um, and it really grew their relationship because they were able to talk about gardening together and share resources and experience. And Anna Crenshaw is another gardener from last year. Um, it helped her start her garden, and she was concerned about critters, um, but we are able to provide a chicken wire fence, which helps, you know, deter some of those uh, critters. We gave them plants, and she is so grateful and can't wait for this year. <laughs> So a basic overview of our program and the services we provide. The first thing we do is a site assessment after you've submitted an application. Um, and so we'll come to your home and find a good spot in your yard. So we look at factors like the sun, soil quality, proximity to the water resources, so wherever you have a hose, um, and different things like that. And then we will prepare your <clears throat> yard for tilling and gardening. Um, so we will actually come and help till the yard and provide compost 
and mulch um, just to help with the soil health. And then we also provide seeds and plant starts. Um, and then we also intend to provide some educational materials and connecting to other programs in the area. So one of the things that we're starting this year is providing more resources to beginning gardeners because a lot of people in this program, this is their first time gardening or first time in a long time, maybe. Um, so people really need help knowing how to garden. It's not enough to just get them started most of the time. So one of our members has created these really nice garden care cards for um, each of the popular vegetables and plants to give some different tips um, and things to look out for with disease and pests. And then we will also be sending out newsletters to give updates about upcoming events at um, with ISC Extension and some other things going on, um, a lot of extension and master gardeners in the area doing workshops and things like that. And so that's the basics of our program. We currently have 95 applicants. So you already almost tripled the amount from last year. And we have ordered seeds and plant starts, which will be arriving in a couple weeks here. Um, so we will be calling applicants to start scheduling their site assessments and tilling. So if you are interested, I would recommend applying soon. You can find our application on our website, which is a garden in every lock.org. And then you could also call our office or email lwsamericorps at gmail.com, which will come to me, and you and I local food at gmail.com, which will go to Mira. Thank you. I will put um, the application link in the chat. Um, in general, how much compost should be added to a garden? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, probably a couple of inches. So we will bring compost from Cedar Falls or Waterloo. Um, and we will just bring it along. And so we should know how big your garden is and um, figure out how much we need to bring. Um, 